Solely this action scenes featured interesting choreography, loose... Hold up, wrong script. Soul Eater certainly had a recognisable art style. Big old goth boots with pigtails and a two button coat. Not the AliExpress one, the Hugo Boss one. This young talent, Atsushi Okubo, had created a look that stood out even among the greats. But this breakdown isn't entirely about Okubo, as it was character designer Yoshiyuki Ito who translated these designs to the big screen. And this channel is more so focused on the anime side. So join me as we go over the art style of Soul Eater. So a strong silhouette is the fundamental behind many great designs, whether western cartoons or anime. But what stood out to me was the face, particularly the eyes and nose. Now the eyes are often what we're drawn to first when looking at the face, and a lot of character designers, whether in the 90s or in more recent years, love to emphasise it. It's very common to see eyes packed with information, highlights, shading, and even detailing the pattern to the iris. Whereas Ito's designs, it's just one simple shadow, no highlights, nothing, and a single line used to shape the eye. No lashes, very simple. A direct translation from Okubo's illustrations. The nose also fits into that area of simplicity, but also uniqueness. Now the nose is usually quite simplified in a lot of anime. An approach you've no doubt seen is one that uses just two lines, with a strong sharp curve, some long, some short, to define the bridge and bottom part. Sometimes it's just a little dot with a bit of shadow on the side, or it's only the nostrils that are drawn, usually in a front view that is. Even in the Soul Eater manga initially, and in later works, Okabot draws the nose in such a way across the main cast, but eventually drifts to a simple oval shape to define the bottom plane to the nose. No nostrils or bridge line. And Ito definitely brings that over, albeit enlarging it just a bit and adding a break in the line. And I'm sure some people will find more appeal in the other designs I've showed, but this stylization gives a very distinct look to the characters, especially in the profile view. It's also these two features that make the designs for Soul Eater not by Satoshi Koike feel different as they're sort of the opposite, with detailed eyes and small shaped noses. Anyways, with other facial features like the mouth, it sits down pretty low on the face, say to some shows like One Piece and Dragon Ball as an example which really like to tuck the mouth right under the nose, or Naruto where it's sort of positioned in the middle. Then with hairstyles you got a lot of variety again, and are very easy to tell by the silhouette. Now for Soul and Blackstar especially it's quite simple with big triangular shapes. Interestingly though, the way Okabot draws his hair has changed a bit over time, but why triangles? Well, triangular shapes can give a feeling of aggression or energy. It's quite a common design choice used for villains, which of course they are not, but the words aggressive and energetic definitely do suit, especially for a character like Blackstar. Then there's a character like Patty, whose hair is rounded off at the ends, and of no coincidence, round shapes are usually attributed to being bouncy, happy, and soft. The latter maybe doesn't apply too much in this case, but the, the rest definitely match. Anyway, zooming out from the face and looking at the design as a whole is the shoes. Yeah, I'm jumping all over the place here. Going back to the aforementioned Shonen classics, you can see a lot of different approaches and being very general here. Oda likes to go with a lot of open footwear. Kishimoto, it's those open toe boots. Toriyama, it's often pointy boots or those kung fu slippers. And Soul Eater has a thing for chunky shoes and really dives into giving variety and plays a big part in the silhouette. And when you bring in the stylized anatomy, you get a clear design. To be more specific, it's size contrast. So with Maka, you'll go from big boots to like thin tube-like legs. With the arms again, it's thin to these oversized sleeve cuffs. It creates a distinctive silhouette. And going back to Satoshi's designs for Soul Eater Knot, and this isn't Satoshi hate by the way, he's a great artist. However, you can see he's like defined the calf muscle, which gives a bit extra thickness to the legs. The boots, hands, and sleeve cuffs are like sort of shrunk and less exaggerated overall. It's very much a more grounded approach, but with that, it's not as bold in his silhouettes as Ito's. And without getting sidetracked either, just as Ito was taking cues from Okubo's style at the time, when the original Soul Eater anime production began, Satoshi was also going off his then current style for Maka near the end of the series, and of no surprise how he was drawing her in Soul Eater not. Anyway, on that note of being distinct, 
Another piece of that in the designs is the use of motifs that represent something about the character. So with Blackstar, he has a star on his shoes and shoulder. With Death the Kid, you have uh, the skull. With Justin Law, it's a cross. Killick, it's a flame pattern shirt and necklace. Erica, it's a frog hat. Medusa, it's a snake tattoo. For Sid, there is no deeper meaning to his tattoos, or at least I thought. Turns out the kanji on his shoulder translates to death, which was kind of prophetic. Simply, it's another feature that gives personality to these character designs and makes each one unique and memorable. Sort of separate to that though, Soul Eater had a thing for rectangles. Sometimes it's for stitching like across Stein's lab coat and him or Kid, Liz and Patty where it's a bit of both used for the sleeves but also in place of the buttons. With Liz and Patty it's across the belt and for the stitching of their hats. Of course this is definitely Tim Burton's influence coming through who Okobo has directly mentioned in the past and just about everyone brings up when discussing his art. Now finally is the shading. Although it's tempting to pack a design with detail, it's also up to the character designer to consider how easy it will be to animate for the staff. And as great as detailed shading looks, outside of taking much longer to draw, it can also stiffen the motion. So Itok goes with pretty simple, soft overhead lighting, the shapes of broad strokes with a curved shape, and of course animators and animation directors can have varied takes on the design sheet, so some of these stylistic notes may be more dominant or completely changed altogether. But with that wraps it up, that was the final detail. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and please consider checking out my Patreon to keep the channel going. And of course, shout out to all my current Patreons and Sol Binku in the High Roller class. However, with that, thanks again, and I'll see you later.